Hey, Jared here from SoundGuitarLessons.com. This is the second episode of a series called Make It a Chord Melody. We're doing a bunch of chord melodies, arranging melodies with harmony supported as we play it, which on the guitar is such a treat because usually we can play a single note and not hear how the chords go with it, or we can play the chords and not hear how the melody goes with it. So we're doing some jazz tunes here first. We'll do some uh, popular songs later in the series. Today's video is Manha de Carnaval. This is a standard jazz tune that is a bossa nova piece of music and is the theme song from the movie called Black Orpheus. So it's often referred to as Black Orpheus, one of my favorite tunes, one of my favorite melodies. Step one, as we did in the last video, you can check out the whole series. There'll be a link to the whole series um, in the description. In the last video, we did Autumn Leaves. When we went through a series of steps, we're going to go through those same steps here with this melody. The first thing I want to do is just get the melody in our ears so we can get familiar with what we're working with. <laughs> involved melody, quite a range. It's going to be a challenge to arrange it as a chord melody. But let's do step two, which is I just want to show you the chords. So here are the chords for this tune. We have A minor and then a minor 2-5. Going back to A minor, minor 2-5, A minor again, and now 2-5 to C major, then A7 leading to D minor. This is 2 G7, C major, F major 7, that's 2, 5, 1, 4 in the key of C, and then back to B half diminished, E7, leading back to A minor again. So just wanted to give you the chords here and show you, and, and so we can hear them. If you don't know the shapes I'm playing or how to play that, don't worry about it. I'm going to give you shapes here for the chord melody part. Just wanted us to review the melody, review the chords. We obviously need those two things to then put them together. Let's go to the next step here where we want to make sure that we have the melody outlined on the top string, top two strings, top three strings, like the higher strings as much as possible. And that, depending on the chord shape, we're going to use to harmonize the melody as we do this chord melody arrangement, as we're following the melody along and having a chord shape for every instance of the melody. Um, the shape we can use just physically and, and how comfortable it is is going to dictate that sometimes, but we want to get the melody arranged on the highest strings as much as possible, and then we can see if when we're arranging it we have to move where the melody is. But kind of where I played it already is close, so we got... That's fine. And then... I might go down here. You don't, you don't need to follow what I'm doing. I want to do this for you so you can see, ah, when I'm practicing, when I'm kind of playing with this in the future, I want to go through this step. And then, so I actually moved a lot of that melody down to the second string. So we're able, we're going to be able to glide along the top and second string as much as possible. So that's one of the steps is make sure your melody is contained to the upper strings um, as much as possible. And now we can go through adding chord shapes to every instance of the melody, and I'll give you diagrams for those. So here we go, chord by chord. Okay, this is a pickup note, so this is the first note on beat one. Now, I recommend, of course, that you watch the video before this in this series, which is Autumn Leaves. If you haven't yet, check that out at your convenience. What I talked about in that video is that when there's a minor third on the top string, that we need to harmonize as the melody. So I'm thinking of the chord tones and the theory of it, then we can always use this shape. And that's the shape that I prefer and that I use. There's, there's other options. You could play this, which is A minor seven. This is one, five, flat, seven, flat, three. But I like this minor 11 shape. This is one, 11, flat, seven, flat, three. One, 11, flat, seven, flat, three. It's just nice and easy to play. I can jump to it with this, with a kind of a bar here, or I like to often play it like this. So forever, if the melody you need to play is on a minor chord, and if the melody itself is the third, the flat third of that minor chord, and you can play it on the top string, that's your shape, right? So the more of those we memorize, the more we're just unlocking a language 
of how to play chord melodies over anything. Okay, so we'll play this note. I'm actually just gonna give us this chord shape because that works over the E7 flat nine or E7 flat 13. Okay, now we're just looking at what happens over what chord. Na, da, da. That's flat three, two, one of A minor. So notice my approach to this is reliant on knowing the chord tones and scale degree numbers and then figuring things out from there. So flat three, two, one of A minor. Flat three. Okay, great, we got that one. Um, well, here is a shape. It's very common for A minor seven. If we take this and put it on the top, we get this. It's an inversion, third inversion of A minor seven. Now with this chord melody approach, I said this in the last video too, you can replace the root any time. So if the melody is the root, great, play it. But if it's not, then you can replace the root or the fifth to get the right melody note. So this is a wonderful chord shape. This is A minor seven with nine or two as the melody. So now we have flat three, two, and then you just lift off that pinky for that. So here we go with the first four notes. Okay, it's coming together. Let's move on to the next chord, which is B half diminished. I'm just gonna give this to you here. This is just a straight up inversion of B half diminished. I always emphasize working on drilling inversions of seventh chords if we want to comp or do chord melody or interact or just be fluent at chord shapes and jazz and all that. And that's what my jazz comping uh, courses are about. But here, you know, if we know any of that at all, we get to start to use it to piece melodies together. So we have... Oh, it sounds so good because the melody stayed the same. And that harmony moved under it on the second... Um, articulation of the melody of the A note right there. Absolutely beautiful. So we're on B half diminished right now. We're only on the second measure. Okay, here's the E7 measure. And then down to A minor. Okay, so this diminished shape is a shape that we will use in chord melody extensively if we're playing a dominant seven flat nine chord because you can get several chord tones with that exact same shape. So this is quite nice. This is the third of E7. This is flat nine, this is five, this is flat seven, and this is three of E7. This melody here is the five of E7. And now we have the flat, th oh, we have the major third, the flat seven, the flat nine, and the five. Don't worry about memorizing those. The numbers are on your chord shapes on the screen as well, but just giving you some information as I give you these chord shapes. So now, so we have oh, absolutely lovely. It's just got so nice to hear the melody versus to hear the melody, but supported with chords every time. Yes, it's a little clunky. And I said this in the last video that I call this the clunky version. And then later, we can start to not support every note, but I like to support every note with a chord shape at first and then make it more graceful and kind of rearrange it and start messing with it later. I'll give a really good example of that after we arrange a little bit more of this. So we have, um, okay, now, Measure four, back to the A minor. This is the second line. Now we have D minor, same melody though. This is a, just a standard inversion of D minor seven. This is first inversion D minor seven, flat three, flat seven, root five. Okay, then the melody goes, well that's easy because this is the root of G and this is the third of G. So chord inversion of G with the root on the top, chord inversion of G seven that is, G seven with the third on the top, and then C major seven with the third on the top. G seven, G seven, C major seven. See how it's coming together with a few of these guidelines and, and rules and just having an approach, having a strategy. strategy. So from the beginning, uh, okay, second line. D minor seven, G seven. This is why it's so powerful because that's the same melody, but the harmony under it was different. And now I'm gonna go to a, an inversion of A seven flat nine. 
while that's ringing on top. So that can be the hardest part about this, changing chords if the melody needs to ring on top. Okay, so let's check that out again. And so I don't overwhelm you. Let's just do that first half of the chords that are showing on the screen. That's changing to the A7 chord there, but that's enough to show you kind of the premise and you know enough to start practicing it there. Let me show you for a sec how I might arrange it to fill it out a little more. So I might go, I might start, fill it out, but also make it easier and make it, um, I shouldn't say fill it out, but make it more musical, right? Some places I'm gonna not play chords, some places I'm going to add movement where I'm actually playing the melody and the harmony separately from each other. Some places I'm gonna add lower notes. So I might play this as the first note instead of this. So open E and then jump to this chord shape that we know. Do these, but not play this. I'll go. So the second note is just melody by itself. And then I might go. Like play this melody, then fill in this chord and then. Play an open E. Play an open A or open E, you know, when those chords are there. So filling it out and turning it into something more musical, maybe more sparse if needed, or maybe more uh, solo guitar arrangement wise. That's actually roughly uh, starting to lean towards a solo guitar arrangement that I have of this tune that you can get totally for free in my solo guitar arrangement pack. There's a link to it in the description or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon to get that. There's tabs and notation and you can study these exact chord, uh, chord shapes and how I arrange this just like we talked about with the tabs um, and notation in front of you if you like. If you like this tune, what I recommend watching next is my video about playing any jazz chord with just eight shapes. Awesome video, but in that video, I demonstrate playing over this tune. I improvise over it and uh, demonstrate even more with Manha de Carnival, playing the chords over it, showing the shapes, stuff like that. So if you're interested, check that video out. I'll put a link to it on the screen here if you're watching on YouTube, or you can get to it with the link in the description. I post a new lesson video every week, and next week we are continuing with this chord melody series called Make It a Chord Melody. And instead of arranging a tune or a song as chord melody, we're going to talk about improvising with chord melody. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.